Hi. Just want to show you the beautiful day we're having out here. Nova Scotia in mid-April. Ah, uh, there you go. Doesn't get any better than that. All right, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia. Let's see if I can get this set up just right for you so you can see. Oh, there we go. Let's see if I can, let's give you an explanation of what I'm gonna do. It's uh, April 19th um, and uh, we're basically uh, gonna throw some balls today. I did mugs yesterday. It's, uh, um, I was basically decorating those after I did the video yesterday and uh, maybe tomorrow I can show you how I'll stencil remove them because I did them in that technique. I did the plates the other day. Um, they're drying over there. So, um, but since we did cylinders into various forms of mugs yesterday, I thought I would do bowls, uh, which is um, a variation, but you don't really uh, start with a straight cylinder for a bowl. Um, so let's get cracking. I'm going to use the B-Mix clay again, and I've cut the clay up into, there you go, if you can see that. And I also put this here, so if you can see it, uh, it's actually two websites. Because somebody wanted to see what I make and how I make it. So let's tilt that around so you can see that as well. There you can catch it. If you want to take a look at the work I've done over the last, uh, how many years is it? 1985 to 2011 is the old website at the top. I still left it up even though it's 10 years old. I haven't touched it really much in the last 10 years. Uh, but it's a record keeping website. Um, so I think it's nice to, for my uh, collectors over the years to actually see the pieces um, and especially since people are inheriting pieces these days they might want to see what the cost was originally so I've left it up there but all the prices on that side are uh, 10 years old uh, so the new website underneath is the one I use now which is not really a, a commercial website but if anybody wants anything off the websites they can contact me the information's all there um, all right so let's start with a small ball okay this is one pound of clay. All right, get my wheel cleaned up. Sound effects. And yeah, my cat just went over there. She was behind me. She likes to sleep in the window sill behind me. All right, so. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen the other videos, hopefully, um, so you know how to seal it down onto the wheel. I banged it down. Now I'm going to just put pressure on from side and top to make that little mold in my hand. So it's like that. So the clay can't wobble. Push it in, push it down. Just give it a bit of movement. As soon as it stops wobbling completely, let go slowly. Put a hole in the center. Don't make a flat base this time. Bowls generally have a curve, so you don't want to go down and flat across. So I just don't make that little flat base that you would get in a coffee mug. So I'm still trying to compress the bottom a little bit, and I've left about a centimeter. Since I do put a foot on a bowl, I leave a centimeter thick instead of a half a centimeter. All right. Watch this, it's not a cylinder. Pressure outside and inside and come up as soon as you put the pressure on so you don't drag the water off. So it's not really a cylinder, it's getting a bit wider. Drop water on the right on the rim so it goes inside and out. Press deep with your outside fingers, press back with your inside fingers just a little. So each time you pull, you're trying to let it a little wider let go slowly at the rim. Dribble it inside and out. Now press again with the outside fingers depending on how wide a foot you want. 
and start pulling up again. So this is the third pull. Now when I get to the rim, I'm going to put my finger down and compress the rim a little bit because it's actually been stretched three times there. Take the water out of the inside. I always bring that water right up to the rim so that it keeps the rim fairly smooth. There's the metal rib. So it's equally moist all the way up from the bottom to the top. So then I'm going to put my fingers with the rib on the outside, just the edge, not the flat part of the rim, so it drags the water off, but I also stretch the bowl out a little wider. And the rib has a nice curve, so I can put that on the inside. And when I get to the top, I need a little trumpet shape, because I like my ribs to stretch out a little bit. So I pushed out a little bit further. And then, uh, should have wet this before I threw actually, but this is that little rim compressing thing that I use. I haven't thought of a name for this basically, but it replaces the leather that I use, which I have here as well. If my rim is too thick, I have to still use the leather. I'm just going to knock that. There was a little rough piece of clay there. All right, so do I want a spiral on the inside of the bowl? You can just use your finger and make a tiny hint of a spiral down there. It catches the eye when somebody's looking in it, so I think it's always a good idea to do it. Now, because these bowls hang out quite a long way, I leave them on the bat. There you go. And that's one pound of clay. I should have bought a tape measure here, I could have given you a measurement, but um, here's my hand. So you can see it's bigger than my hand width. Alrighty. So, another bat. These are those bats that I talked about in a different video. My friend and I, he did most of the work, but... Um, they're made from ice hockey panels um, that you would use um, on the side of an ice hockey rink to stop the guys from hitting it too hard. And he cut them up with a jig and made me a whole bunch of these bats. They worked out at about $5 a piece, I think. Maybe not even that much, maybe $4 a piece. I hope everybody's doing good. Um, it's kind of a tough weekend because the weather's so nice and we're not allowed to get on our beaches. I have a beach right outside the window here. It's a pebble beach, um, but we're not allowed to get on it because the social distancing. All right, so cleaned bat. This is one and a half pounds of clay. Make that mold shape in your hand again. Good idea to squish it down, move it back up. You can feel if there's anything in the clay sometimes, and I can feel something in this one. I don't know what it is. It's brand new clay. Sometimes the guy probably threw his chewing gum in the clay at the clay manufacturer, but something's in there. I'm going to do it anyway. It's probably just a bit of stiff clay. Okay, fingertip, push down. One centimeter from the bottom. There's the lump. I can feel it right in the base there. There's like a piece of hard, some, something that's hard anyway. But since it's in the bottom, I don't think it's going to affect it too much. Yeah, right there. It'd be nice to see if it's something horrible though. Find my pin. It's not worth going on if there's something horrible in the clay. Nope, just hard clay. I have found all sorts in my recycled clay, but it's rare to find anything in brand new clay. 
Okay, so press your fingers together and lift. It's a bigger piece of clay. I'm going to compress the rim each time because I'll be able to stretch it a little further. Dig deep on the outside, press back with the inside fingers. Yeah, there was a fire engine just went by here, so we're not allowed to do any burning at the moment because the fire brigade doesn't want to have to go out. But it is still cold. It snowed last night right here, April 19, and we got snow last night. Not a lot, just a dusting. But we are in Nova Scotia. I noticed somebody just uh, subscribed to my pottery channel from... Jamaica, I think it was. Uh, welcome Yabba Pottery. It'll be a little warmer where you are, I'm sure. There we go. I'll take a look. If you have a website, I'll take a look later on and see what you make. I can see the thing that I've in there. It's very white. So there's a, some probably hard piece of white clay. Now, this is what I do, it's, it's like, the, it's not flat, it's edge, and it's basically just to drag the water off the clay, which is basically liquid slip at this point. That's my leather, it's been getting in the way. Isn't it amazing, we have a world of potters. When I grew up in Yorkshire, in England. I was born in Scotland, but I learned how to do pottery. I've talked about it before from my uh, art teacher, which was Anne McPake, and then Greg Allen was my clay teacher. I've never heard from, I know Anne McPake, she's still around in Yorkshire, and she's a really good artist herself, and um, she's probably in her 70s now. Um, but um, well, there was uh, Glyn Burton, He's in the Isle of Man or the Isle of Wight. I always mix those two up. And he's now a jewelry maker. If anybody knows anybody of these people, say hello to them for me. And we're all in the same boat. We're all facing this pandemic and doing the best to keep ourselves occupied and being patient for it to go away. I'll show you that white thing if it shows up on the camera. It's just a little piece of white clay. And there's another one a bit higher up. Here's a little spiral. Oop, yeah, it went right over the white thing. All right, I'm not sure if you can see it. In the bottom, there's a lump of white clay stuck in the other clay. This is B-Mix. It's a really nice clay body. It's my favorite. Um, there we go. And that was a one pound ball and then a uh, one and a half pound ball. And now if I can dig it out, because it's at the bottom of my bag of clay. When I'm throwing, I always store my clay in the plastic bag it came from to stop it getting unevenly dry while you're throwing. Because if you leave your clay out to the open to the air when you're throwing, by the time you've got through all the pieces, the last few pieces you throw, will actually be quite dry at the edges. I'm, these are dark bits of clay I'm fetching off, so I'm not putting them in my throwing water because I don't want it to darken the water. These bowls are going to be decorated. I'll put those cats on I did the other day. Oh yeah, this will be hard to get down there. But um, doesn't want to come out. I can bang two pieces together. These are both one and a half pound balls of clay that I cut up already, but I can't get to the other one. So three pounds of clay. All right, round it off so it's actually going to not trap any air under there. All right, three pounds of clay. So 
One pound first, one and a half pound, now three. I'm gonna cone this because I stuck two pieces of clay together. So I think it'd be a good idea to compress the clay and cone it to make sure those pieces are well sealed. Okay, bigger hockey puck. There was an air bubble. That was from the two balls being knocked together, I'm sure. Open it up. Always let go slowly. In my old two websites here, if you can still see them, um, the first one I I did back in the uh, mid-90s, 1990 I guess it would have been. So it was going for about 15 years and it's got some really old work on it. I mean, I think like every potter, I, I've tried a lot of things. I developed a technique myself, which is this stencil technique. I did that for a friend in England back in 1984. I developed the technique because he wanted me to make trophies for whippet racing in England. So I, I made a designed a technique where I could do duplicates. So that stencil technique is pretty unique to us. And um, it's basically layered clay, four layers of clay. And you just it basically slip, colored slip. You just stain the slip any color you want. Um, and uh, there's a book, if you can still find it, uh, by John Pollux in England. I have a copy of it that's really old. But that's what got me into using slips. And he was doing very traditional English slipware. Beautiful old English pottery. Medieval jugs and he was doing replicas and then he had some of his own technique as well. Uh, own designs which are more contemporary for what he was up to. Okay see how big this one's going? It's already quite thin so I'm digging deep in the outside there and I can feel a couple of those little white lumps in this piece too. Uh, there it is. It's going right through my fingers there. If it's bumping, you can see it. So when I start a pull, I have to go all the way to the top. Because if you stop in the middle, you'll be able to see where your fingers let go. Now the rim should always be a little thicker than the wall. So I just let go a little bit earlier up there but compress the rim with my fingers. If you make a thin rim, it'll chip easily. So you want a little extra thickness at the rim. Now I'm dragging that water that was in the bottom all the way to the top. So the next time when I use the metal rib, my fingers won't stick to the clay anywhere. Okay, so. The rib is at right angles, perpendicular to the clay. My fingers are pressing right against the actual metal edge with the clay running between. Let go slowly, there's quite a bit of clay off there then. So this bowl I've done as a outside decorated bowl. So I will actually paint the upper half on the outside. Which means I'm not really gonna flare it out much. 
because I want people to see the outside of the ball when they're looking at it. That lump is spinning around in there. Let's hope it's just white, stiff white clay, because that means that it's in two pieces out of three so far. There you go, grab all the water off. This is a little, I think it's a bit thick for my tool. The rim is a little wide, I mean, so I can try it. No, nope, just over out, just to compress it, just a touch. All right, so here's my hand. So it's a big ball, three pounds of clay. And my guess is it's about five inches high. Now, whenever you take these bats off the wheel, sometimes they stick. So just use a screwdriver. I put my metal rib under the bat and then put my screwdriver under that. And you can pop it up without banging it. There you go. There you go. We're up to 21 minutes. I'm going to throw a bunch more balls. I've got a lot more to do. Um, but I ran, ran on a little long yesterday. So, all right. So, uh, balls. That was my intro to that. So uh, I'm trying to do a video, if not every day, it'll be every other day for a while during the lockdown. Um, so those are the two websites I talked about. So just check them out. Let's see if there's anything you like on them. Um, chances are I won't have it made because the old website for sure, but I can still make things from that website. Uh, and the new website is just a, a sort of tour through our uh, studio and um, and the gallery with a, some work on there but um, but if you like the stuff just you know let, let us know all right thank you very much for stopping into Nova Scotia on sunny April 19th all right bye